Okay, so today we're going to be going over Lewis structures. Now, there's two main things that you need to know um, to do a Lewis structure su successfully. And there are two things that we've already talked about. So the first thing is just knowing the number of valence electrons. So if you know the number of valence electrons for a certain atom, um, you're pretty much halfway there. And then second thing is knowing the electronegativity of your common elements. So um, this is just some common elements that you can have, but you can also know, right? Remember electronegativity increases towards fluorine. So towards right here, this corner, and then electronegativity is the lowest in this bottom corner. Okay. So before we get to a Lewis structure, there's also something very similar called a Lewis dot diagram. And a Lewis dot diagram basically represents the valence electrons in an atom. So for example, if you have hydrogen, right? Hydrogen is in group one, so it only has one valence electron. So you literally just draw it, draw a dot. And the dot is what represents the electron. Um, right, so we could do another one. So like fluorine, fluorine has seven valence electrons. So you would just draw seven dots. And you usually draw electrons as pairs. So if you have two of them, you would draw them up as a pair. And then if you have one by itself, then you draw it as a single dot. Okay, so we could do another one. So like sulfur, right, it has six valence electrons. So you would draw it like that. Okay, um, I'm not going to do all of these because I think it's pretty straightforward. So you just draw the valence electrons as dots. Okay, so this is going to be like the bulk of the lesson, drawing a Lewis dot structure. So there's a lot of words here, but the main thing that you need to know is Lewis dot structures or diagrams represent covalent, I should say molecules, because it's not just compounds. So they represent covalent molecules because they can show which electrons are being shared. So again, electrons are shown as dots. Um, they can also be shown as a line for bonding electrons. I'll go over what that looks like. Um, and then you also have to follow the octet rule. So remember the octet rule is atoms want eight valence electrons. Um, the only exceptions in this case right, would be like hydrogen and helium, because they want two. Um, because remember, again, that first layer can only fit up to two electrons. So pretty much any other atom that we're going to use for covalent compounds or molecules will want eight valence electrons. Just watch out for like hydrogen, even helium. Helium is a noble gas, so it doesn't bond to anything. So you're never going to really be asked like to draw um, a compound or a molecule with helium in it. It'll basically only be hydrogen. Okay, and then here's even more words. So um, these are all the rules for a Lewis structure. There is a way faster way to do it, but I'm going to show you how to do that a little bit later in the end. Uh, just because like you should know how to do the actual way, um, because the fast way doesn't work for like every every single atom or molecule. I mean, it works for like 95% of them, I would say. Uh, but I'm going to just teach like the correct way first, and then I'll teach you the shortcut way. Okay, so first thing is you find the total number of valence electrons. Um, again, if you have a negative compound, you would add an extra electron or electrons. If your compound is positive overall, that means it lost electrons. So you would remove electrons from the total. But you find the no total number of valence electrons. Step two, you're going to put the least electronegative atom in the center. Um, and there are some exceptions. So carbon, no matter what, will always go in the center. And then hydrogen, even though it's the least electronegative, um, or it's a very like low electronegative atom, um, hydrogen will always go on the outside. Okay, so these are your two exceptions to the rule. Um, okay, 
Step three is you're going to put two electrons between atoms to form a chemical bond. And I'll show you what that looks like. Step four, you complete your octets. Again, these are some exceptions, um, hydrogen and helium. And then this is also an exception, aluminum and boron. So if a question ever asks you for aluminum and boron, just make sure you remember it only wants six electrons um, instead of wanting the eight. And that's because, well, aluminum and boron, they're kind of like metal metalloids, so they behave a little bit differently. But I usually don't ask about this too much. Um, but just make sure you know these are exceptions. And then step five, this is like an optional step. So it only happens sometimes. But if your center atom does not have an octet, you're going to rearrange the electrons from the outer atoms to form double or triple bonds. And again, I'll show you what that looks like. Um, so you have single, double, and triple bonds. Obviously, single bonds are weakest, and then triple bonds are your strongest atoms. So again, I'll show you guys all what that looks like. Um, I would say the most important rules here are the ones I'm about to like circle. So I mean, they're all important. But I guess the ones people make a lot of mistakes on is, I would say this step, rule number four. So when you complete your octets, you go from your outside atoms first. So outside to inside. So you go from out to in. You never go from inside to outside. Okay, so just, I'll emphasize this again, but just don't mess up on this part because you're gonna mess up um, your Lewis structure. So this, like, it's not important for the easier ones we're gonna do right now, but for the harder ones, it's gonna be important. Okay, so let me just, let's go over this, right? So HCl. So I always just write my total valence electrons over on the left. So you have hydrogen and chlorine. So hydrogen, if you look, it has one valence electron. Chlorine has seven valence electrons. So one plus seven, my total would be eight. Okay, so that was step one. Step two, it says put the least electronegative atom in the center. Um, hydrogen always wants to go on the outside. Here you only have two atoms, so you can't have a center atom. So we can just skip step two. Um, but if you have more than two atoms, then you would have a center one, so you would need to follow this. Um, but for now, you just put them next to each other. Step three, you put two electrons between the atoms to form a chemical bond. Okay, so I'm gonna literally draw two electrons between my atoms, and that'll be my chemical bond. Okay, and since I used two electrons, you're gonna subtract it from your total. So minus two, which means you have six left over. Okay, so you can't use more electrons than you have in your total here. Okay, so we did step three. Step four, complete the octets on the outside atoms first. So in this case, it doesn't matter which one you start off with because they're both on the outside. Um, so let's just start with hydrogen, right? Remember hydrogen, it wants two electrons. So when you have electrons in a bond, I'm gonna write it here, bonding electrons belong to both atoms in the bond. Okay, because remember covalent compounds, they share electrons. So these two electrons belong to hydrogen they also belong to chlorine. So if I look at hydrogen right now, right now it has two electrons from this bond. So remember again, hydrogen only wants two electrons. So this hydrogen is content or happy, it's stable. So it doesn't want any more electrons. Once your octet is complete, um, then you don't really have to touch that atom. So I can move on to chlorine, right? If I look at chlorine, it wants, Right now it has two electrons, but it wants eight total, remember, to get your octet. So it needs six more. So I can just add six more electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? And then you can just subtract six from your total. So you have zero left over. Once you hit zero and both of your atoms are content, 
that means you're done with your Lewis structure. So this would be my Lewis structure right here for HCl. Um, one other thing to note too is instead of writing it like that, you could just write it as a bond. So this line represents a bond between the two atoms. And I think the bond is easier to see that it's like connecting them. And again, this each bond, so a line can represent a bond of two electrons. So each line represents two electrons, okay? So you have to have two electrons to form a bond. So you can either draw it as two dots or you can draw it as a line. Um, I always draw it as a line, but you do whatever makes you feel more comfortable. Okay, um, this example here, pretty much the exact same thing as this, uh, except it has a negative charge, right? So I'll do this one again, but I'm gonna do it a little bit faster. So my total electrons would be oxygen, which has six valence electrons, plus hydrogen, which has one. And then if you look here, it has a negative one charge, right? So if you have a negative one charge, that means you add an electron because it has an overall negative charge. So my total would be, again, eight valence electrons. Um, so again, this six is from the oxygen, this one is from the hydrogen, and then this is from the negative charge. So again, you just draw the elements next to each other. So O and H, um, and then you draw a bond between them. So I used up two electrons. So I have six total, right? Um, I can focus on this oxygen. So this oxygen right now, it has two electrons, but it needs six more. So I would do one, two, three, four, five, six. So minus six. That goes to zero. And then you don't have any more electrons anyways, but we can check for hydrogen, right? Hydrogen has these two electrons, so it's content. So both of these have octets, so we're good. And then the only thing that you need to do is if any time you have a charge, you need to put brackets and you need to put the charge on the top right-hand corner. So this would be OH minus or minus one. Um, but if you have just a normal compound, you don't need to put brackets on the charge. Okay. Um, so these were a little bit easier. The next ones, I mean, this one is still pretty easy, but I would say like anytime you get to step five, so with like double bonds or triple bonds, I think that's when people get confused. Um, but we'll just focus on these easier ones for now. So I'm going to do H2O and then I'm going to have you guys do NF3. Okay, so H2O, again, right here, we have multiple different atoms. But again, it says right here, hydrogen always goes on the outside. So if you look at this oxygen, then you have two hydrogens and one oxygen. So you should have the oxygen in the center. Um, just because your hydrogens always go on the outside. And I'll give you a little clue too, like Lewis structures tend to be symmetrical. Okay, so if you're confused on what goes in the center, uh, most of the time they're gonna be symmetrical. So just write it out, right? You can't have it symmetrical unless you have the oxygen in the middle. So you would never have it like HHO or something like that. Okay. So again, write the total number of valence electrons. So you would have one plus six plus one, right? One, six, one. So that would be eight total again. Um, and then you draw two bonds. between each of the atoms. So right now I just used four electrons. 
So I have four left over. And then again, you check your outside atoms first, and then you focus on the inside. So if I focus on my hydrogens, right, these are both content. So they both have uh, two valence electrons. So these are good. And then I focus on my oxygen. Right now, my oxygen has four electrons. It needs four more. So you would have one, two, three, four. So this would be my Lewis structure for H2O. Okay, um, and then one thing I want you to note too is there's these things called lone pairs. So it says right here, lone pairs are pairs of non-bonding electrons. So if you look, these are my lone pairs. So this hydrogen atom has two lone pairs, or you could think of it as it has four non-bonding electrons, right? Because these electrons are not a part of a bond. So two lone pairs or four non-bonding electrons. You can also think of that um, as these bonds as well. So right here, right, this element or this uh, molecule has two bonds or four bonding electrons as well, right? You see here, it has two bonds, or in other words, it could be four bonding electrons. So just make sure like you know what your lone pairs are or what your non-bonding electrons are, um, what your bonds are or what your bonding electrons are. Okay, um, I'm gonna have you guys take some time to draw NF3. Um, and then we'll go over it together. And then, yeah, I already did the first two questions for you. So just focus on NF3. Okay, um, I'm gonna start going over this. And then if you're still working on it, you can kind of follow along. Okay, so NF3, um, so my total valence electrons, so each nitrogen would have five, right? Because it's in column 15. And then each fluorine would have seven. So you would have five plus seven plus seven plus seven. That would add up to a total of seven times three is 21 plus five, so 26. So you would have 26 total valence electrons. Um, and then again, nitrogen would be in the center. Um, just because it's less electronegative than fluorine, or you can kind of also think of it like it wants to be symmetrical. So nitrogen would have to be in the middle. Okay, um, and then I would draw bonds between each one, right? So I just use two, four, six electrons. So I would have 20 left over. And then now I can start filling in my octets. So again, always go from your outside atoms first, and then you could focus on your center atom or atoms. Um, in this case, it doesn't matter, but if we were gonna follow the rules exactly, we would focus on the outside atoms, so fluorines. Um, so each fluorine right now only has two electrons. So they would need six more to get an octet. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So 20 minus six, minus six, minus six. That would give us with two electrons left over, right? Because that would be 18, yeah. And then um, now I can focus on my center atom, which is my nitrogen. So each nitrogen, um, right now it has, it had six electrons from the bonds, so you would need two more to get an octet. So this would be my Lewis structure for NF3. Okay, um, once you have your Lewis structure, now you can just like, that lets you write down or figure out how many lone pairs or whatever that you have. So for lone pairs, this structure has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So you have 10 lone pairs. 
or in other words, that would, each lone pair is two electrons, right? So that would be 20 non-bonding electrons. Okay, and this atom or this molecule has three bonds. Or in other words, that would be six bonding electrons. Okay, so if you draw, if you drew it correctly, um, you should have a structure that looks like this. All right, now here is the honk rule. And the honk rule is like really useful because it basically lets you skip all these steps and just write or draw these Lewis structures in a shortcut way. Okay, so I'm going to draw each of these with the honk rule just to show you how fast it is. So the honk rule basically tells you how many bonds an atom wants to form a full shell. So hydrogen and also the halogens. So hydrogen and the halogens will only want to form one bond. Like, I think like 99% of the time, I can't even think of an instance where it doesn't want just one bond. Um, so hydrogen and the halogens only want one bond oxygen and its group will likely form two bonds nitrogen and its group will likely form three bonds and then carbon and its group will likely form four bonds so it goes in order right one two three four honk um, and then other tips so these are i already said these right but carbon always wants to be in the center hydrogen always wants to be on the outside and then if you don't have either of these then just follow the rule with like the least electronegative in the middle. Um, so following the honk rule, I'm gonna just draw H2O, okay? So if I have H2O, right? Again, you would have O in the middle and your H is on the outside. And then it just tells you how many bonds it wants to form. So it's like really easy, right? So hydrogen wants to only form one bond. So you draw a bond. Same thing with this hydrogen, it only wants to form one bond. And then it says oxygen wants to form two bonds. So if I look at this, right, it's already formed its two bonds. It has one bond here and another bond here. So once your bonds kind of like match up, you're pretty much done. All you need to do is fill your octets. So my hydrogens have filled or are already like have filled, I guess, their two electrons. And then oxygen would just need to fill its octet in the center. So two, four, six, eight. And I don't even need to count my total valence electrons because if you do this correctly, um, it'll always just match up perfectly, right? I can do the same thing, right, with NF3. So for NF3, again, I have N, F, 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 right? So each fluorine, right, it's a halogen and only wants to form one bond. So one, two, three, right? Each fluorine forms a bond. And then it also tells you right here, nitrogen and its group wants to form three bonds. So if you look at this, right, it's formed three bonds, one, two, three. And then next you just fill your octets. So fill, 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 fill. And again, I don't even need to count my electrons. Um, as long as your bond number of bonds like matches up here, then you're, um, octet will, or like you can just fill your octets and it'll be okay. So that's kind of the shortcut way. Um, and the shortcut way is really useful when you have like these things called double or triple bonds. So here are our last two examples. I'm going to draw them um, like the normal way first, and then I'll show you it with the honk rule. Okay, so let's do CO2. Um, and then I'll show you guys why, again, like the normal way kind of gets confusing. Um, but you do whichever one you feel most comfortable with. So for CO2, right, again, your carbon always goes in the middle and your oxygens will go on the outside. And that also makes it look symmetrical. And then count our total valence electrons. So oxygen has six. Carbon has four, another oxygen would be six. So this would be a total of 16 total valence electrons. Okay, 
Um, and the next step, you draw a bond between each one, right? So right now I just used four electrons. So you have 12 left over. Okay, and then this is where like that rule becomes really important. So remember it says, um, you're going to complete the octets on the outer atom first. So outside, outside, outside atom first, and then you can focus on the inside. So we're gonna complete the octets on the oxygens first, and then we could focus on the center atom. Again, I just say it because like, if you don't do that, you're gonna mess up. Okay, so um, my oxygen over here on my left, it needs six more electrons. So that would give it its octet. So minus six, you have six left over. Okay, and then this oxygen over here on the right, it also needs six more electrons. So that would, um, that would make it content. And now you have zero electrons left over. So this is the issue we get into when we draw some Lewis structures. Both of my oxygens are good. But if you look at my carbon, its octet is not complete, right? It only has four electrons, but it needs eight or it needs four more. Um, but the problem is you can't just add electrons here because you've already hit zero. You've run out of electrons, so you can't do this. So when you have run out of electrons, um, but your center atom, still doesn't have an octet, that's when you need to do rule number five. You need to rearrange the electrons from the outer atoms to form a double or a triple bond. Okay, so rearrange, which means move. That doesn't mean like you just add more electrons, you just move or rearrange the electrons. So what you can do is you can take a lone pair from the outer atom and make it into a bond. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a lone pair from this oxygen and instead of it being a lone pair, I'm gonna make it into a bonding electron or bonding, it's gonna make turn into a bond. And that works because that means this oxygen will still keep these electrons because it's part of a bond. Um, so it'll still have eight electrons, but it'll allow this carbon to gain two more electrons because now these electrons are not in a lone pair for oxygen anymore. They're being shared between carbon and oxygen. So it'll gain two more electrons. So if I draw this out, right, it'll look like this now. Right, so you can see this oxygen still has its eight electrons, two, four, six, eight. Um, but this carbon now, instead of having only four electrons, it has six electrons. So it still needs two more electrons. And this is a way to like rearrange your electrons so you can give more electrons to your center atom without like physically adding more electrons because you've already run out. So your total electrons should still remain the same. So again, I can move these electrons as well. From a, bond, um, from a lone pair into a bond. So my total or my final Lewis structure should look like this. Okay, and if you count the electrons, all your octets will match up, right? So this oxygen has eight electrons, this oxygen has eight electrons, and then this carbon now has eight electrons. Two, I'll draw this a little thicker two, four, six, eight. Okay, so when you run out of electrons um, on your outer, uh, by filling in your outer atoms, um, but you still haven't like filled in your center atom, that's when you need to make a double or a triple bond. Okay, and then if you count your total electrons, it should always match up. So I'm gonna just double check, right? Our total electrons was 16. So you have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. So everything should be good. Um, okay, so that's kind of like the long way. You can do the short way if you want. So I'll show you guys with the honk rule, right? So if I just draw this again, so C, O, and O. Right, it says right here, each oxygen wants to form two bonds. So 
I would form two bonds. And then this oxygen here also wants to form two bonds, right? Because you can't draw a bond here, right? You can't like, you can't draw a bond here because there's nothing to connect to. So I just form two bonds for my oxygens. And then it says right here, carbon wants to form four bonds. So it has these four bonds here, one, two, three, four. And then you just fill in your octets. And everything should match up. So these are the same. Okay, so I think the honk rule is way easier. Um, so you can do that if you want, but sometimes it won't work. So you still kind of have to know the actual way too, but it's up to you, whatever you feel more comfortable with. Okay, um, I'm gonna launch the next poll. So why don't you guys work on a C2F2 yourself? Um, yeah, I don't know if I should, yeah, I'm just gonna have you guys work on it on your own and then we'll go over it together. Okay, guys, let's finish up. So this one was a little bit more difficult. Um, so I'll just do the fast or the, the normal way first, and then I'll do the fast way. So C2F2, again, carbon always wants to be in the center. So you're going to have your two carbons in the middle, and then you would have your fluorines on the outside. Um, and again, your Lewis structures want to be symmetrical. So um, draw it out how you think it would look symmetrical. Um, and then I'm gonna count my total valence electrons. Right, so I would have seven, each fluorine is seven and each carbon is four. So seven plus four plus four plus seven, that would be, so this would be 14, 18, 22. So I would need 22 electrons total. Okay, um, I would draw a bond between each one, right? So that means I just use six. Um, so that would give me um, 16 left over, right? And then again, fill your outside atoms first. So in this case, my outside atoms are fluorine. So I would fill one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So, oops. That means um, I have four more electrons left over. Okay, so I filled in my outside atoms. Now I can focus on my center atoms. So I can choose any of the center atoms that I want. Um, so in this case, I'll just choose the left one. It doesn't really matter, right? So I would have one, two, three, four. And that would move my total to zero. Okay, so I have three atoms that are content, but I have this one atom here in the center that doesn't have um, that doesn't have a full octet. Okay, so I'm gonna use this atom, this carbon, to make my triple or double bond. The reason why I don't use the fluorine um, to make my double or triple bond is because of this rule. Remember, fluorine only wants to have one bond, right? So these fluorines both only have one bond, so they're happy. Like you don't want to touch these fluorines. Okay, um, so if I move this electron, right, to make a triple bond, and I'm also going to move these to make another bond. Actually, I'll just, let me go slower. So I'm going to move this over here to make a double bond. So if I do that, right, right now, my atom would look like this. But still, here I have eight electrons, but this carbon, I only have two, four, six electrons. So what you would need to do is you need to make another bond by moving this over here. So my final like outcome would be this. Your carbons in the center would have a triple bond, 
because that would make it have eight electrons and then your fluorines would have one bond with these lone pairs. Um, another reason why you don't wanna move this lone pair from a fluorine to make an extra bond here is because that would make your molecule look asymmetrical, right? So let's say I did that. Like, let's say I made a triple bond with fluorine instead. Um, whoops. Right, that would make your molecule look asymmetrical. So you always wanna make it look symmetrical and then you also wanna follow the honk rule. So this would not work. Okay, um, but let me just do it the faster way with the honk rule because it's way easier than this, I feel like. So again, um, you have F, C, C, and F. Remember carbon wants four bonds Fluorine wants just one bond. Okay, so each fluorine wants one bond, right? So these fluorines are happy. And you have to connect these carbons here, right? So these fluorines only want one bond, so they're good. So I'm not gonna touch anything with the fluorines. But remember, each carbon wants four bonds. So this carbon right here only has two bonds. And this carbon right here only has two bonds. Um, I can't add a bond here to the fluorines because the fluorines only want one bond, so they're good. So I would just have to connect the carbon. So if I add another bond, right, make a double bond, that would be three bonds for each carbon. And then if I add another bond, that would be four bonds for each carbon. Okay, and then once your bonds are satisfied, you just fill in your octets. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then your center carbons don't need um, any atoms um, or any lone pairs because they're already content. Okay, so these would be my two Lewis structures. And then we can just go over the quick questions for the pole, right? So how many double bonds does CO2 have? It has two double bonds. Um, and then how many bonding electrons does CO2 have? So you would have two, four, six, eight. So eight bonding electrons. Right, if you chose four, not sure why you would choose four, but remember each line represents two electrons. So you have two, four, six, eight bonding electrons. Okay, and then here it says how many lone pairs does C2F2 have? So you have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, right? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So it would have 12 bonding, 12, oh, sorry, sorry. How many lone pairs? So you have one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so six lone pairs. Or in other words, that would be 12 non-bonding electrons. And then um, how many bonding electrons does C2F2 have? So you have two, well, let me just count the bonds first. So you have one, two, three, four, five bonds, or I guess you have five lines. So this would be two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. So you have 10 bonding electrons, right? It would be consisted of two single bonds and one triple bond, if that makes sense. So 10 bonding electrons. Okay, um, hopefully that made sense. If you're still really confused, again, I'll post the lecture recording um, at the bottom here.